We welcome you to another Sunday School lesson. Sunday School is a blessing and gift from God. As John faithfully prayed in his dungeon, something marvelous happened. God reached down and lifted John out of his hell to give him a glimpse of heaven. God brought him for a visit, so that John could see what God was doing and could tell the other Christians what he had been shown. In the vision, he saw the throne of God surrounded by beings, who gave him continuous worship. John also noticed that in the right hand of the one on the throne, was a book which can only be opened by the victorious lion of the tribe of Judah. John then saw a lamb that appeared to have been slain standing in the middle of the elders who took the book from God the Father, the one sitting on the throne. At this point, the lamb was worshipped by the elders and an innumerable number of angels. John then said that he saw the Lamb begin to open the seals on the book revealing great calamities that will take place in the world and will lead to the tribulation period. Then John saw the sealing of the saved 144,000 Jews from the 12 tribes of Israel. This is where our lesson begins. Our first verse says after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. John saw so many people that no human could count them. These people came from every nation, non-Jews included. They stood before God, the Creator who sat on the throne, and also before the Lamb, the Mediator. When we worship, we come into God's presence, through Jesus Christ, who made the throne accessible to sinners. Then John says that this multitude was clothed with white robes, symbolizing righteousness, justification, holiness, and had palms in their hands signifying them as victorious conquerors. This is the glorious appearance that the faithful servants of God will have. Verse 10 says, And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. This great multitude of people gave God and the Lamb praise for their great salvation, and the Father and the Son together received these praises. The Father planned the salvation, the Son purchased it, the Holy Spirit sealed it, and those who enjoy it must and will praise God the Father and the Lamb, and they will do it publicly, and with vigor. Verse 11 says, All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. John next saw angels standing all around God's throne ready to attend to him, and all around the elders ready to serve them. Then they fell before the throne on their faces, expressing humility and the greatest reverence, and worshipped God. The believer should demonstrate the same humility and reverence when we come before the Lord to address Him in prayer, and to worship Him. The elders are seen wearing crowns, which are exclusively given as rewards to the faithful in the church. These elders also sit on thrones which are associated with the central judgment throne of God. Verse 12 says, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. The angels' first use of the word Amen, showed their agreement to the praises of the elders and shows that there is perfect harmony in heaven between the angels and saints. But the angels added more of their own praises acknowledging the glorious attributes of God, His wisdom, His power, and His might. They declared that for these divine perfections, he ought to receive blessing or be praised and receive thanksgiving and honor, forever. God is deserving of the highest honor because of his great work of salvation, and especially because he is God. Then the angels confirmed all of what they just said with a second Amen, for they know that everything they said was true. Verse 13 says, Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes who are they, and where did they come from? At this point in the heavenly vision, John noted that one of the elders asked him a two-part question, not for the elders' own information, 
but for John's instruction. The first part of the question was what or who are these in white robes? It seems that this question was spoken with admiration for those dressed in white robes. This may indicate what we all should be aware that faithful Christians deserve our notice and respect. The second part of the question was and where did they come from? Again, this question was not because the elder didn't know the answer because he did. It was for John's instruction. It's true that the lowest saint in heaven knows more than the greatest apostle or teacher in the world. Verse 14 says, I answered, Sir you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation, they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Apostle John answered the elder saying Sir I don't know, but I'm sure you do. With this response, John acknowledged his own ignorance, while seeking information. The point here is that those who seek knowledge shouldn't be ashamed to own their ignorance, nor should they be ashamed of their desire to be taught or instructed by anyone who is able to do it. The elder then replied to John saying they were martyrs who had overcome a final period of persecution shortly before the second coming of Jesus Christ. When we go through tribulations well, it will make heaven even more glorious. Second, the elder said they were prepared for the great honor and happiness they now enjoyed around God's throne, clothed in white robes washed by the blood of the Lamb. All other blood, cause stains, but Jesus' blood is the only blood that makes the robes of the saints white and clean. Verse 15 says, Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Those in robes washed in the blood of the Lamb are happy in the presence of God. Full of joy, they serve God day and night without becoming weak, drowsy, or weary. Heaven is a place of service. It is a place of rest, but not a place of laziness for it is a delightful praising rest. All of this continuous worship is done with great joy because of the protection and presence of God, sitting on his throne and dwelling among them. Verse 16 says, Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. Those who came out of the great tribulation are now free from any sense of want or need. All of their wants and needs are provided for, and all the worry caused by those earthly needs is removed. In addition, they won't experience any weather challenges for they shall never suffer from the heat of the sun anymore. Our final verse says, For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, he will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The elder then tells John the Father shall provide them with everything pleasant and refreshing to their souls, and therefore they will neither hunger or thirst any more. In addition God himself, with his own gentle and gracious hand, will wipe all tears away, and turn sorrow into rejoicing. This should encourage the current believer in his own sorrows for as the psalmist said those that sow in tears shall reap in joy. United in praise. God sits at the very center of the universe, and there he is worshipped by all his creation as the great creator of the world. Today, many questions swirl around in the church about what worship really is. The lesson emphasizes one important fact about worship, and that is that worship is more a response to a loving and merciful God than a planned agenda on our part. United in Praise 1. In heaven, God and the Son are worshipped by multitudes of people from everywhere, and angels as well, Revelation 7 9-12. We get a glimpse here of the worship that goes on in heaven, and we ought to start practicing it now on earth to get our hearts prepared for it in heaven, that world where our praises, as well as happiness, will be perfected. 2. This multitude of people are identified as martyrs from the Great Tribulation, Revelation 7 13-14. They had no trust in themselves, or dependence on their own works of righteousness, but wholly trusted and depended on the blood and righteousness of Christ, which is the only way to come out of tribulation, 
and enter the kingdom. 3. Because this multitude was faithful to God, they are privileged to be eternally in his presence, Revelation 7:15. The tribulation survivors are positioned before God's throne and are privileged to serve him continually. For while the multitude worships the Lord, he will provide for them and sustain them while giving them eternal comfort, Revelation 7:16-17. God will protect us from harsh circumstances, take care of us, and give us a reason to rejoice in the place of our sorrow. We are truly glad you spent time to learn this lesson with us. We hope you are blessed and may share these with somebody else. Thank you very much, have a great week, and God bless you always, dear brothers and sisters.